The purpose of this video is to give an outline of a written explanation. A written explanation is a supplementary piece to your creative piece in reading and creating, which is the first area of study in VC English Units 1 and 3. Credit goes to Mr. Stammers for creating the original version of this PowerPoint, uh, which I am talking over. I've adapted it slightly, um, added a few things to the original. So what is the written explanation? It contributes to a quarter of your overall mark. It is a piece, a written piece that accompanies your creative piece of writing. In it, the purpose of it is for you to explain the creative decisions that you've made throughout the process of putting together your writing piece. You need to discuss in, uh, in your written explanation how your writing piece is inspired by the characters, themes, and key moments in the poems, or if you are studying a different text, uh, the original text, and also how you've adapted the poet's techniques into your writing. You can write in first person, as you can see an example there, and you should also write in past tense. So the following slides are examples or of what you should include in your written explanation. And at the end of this video, I will be giving you an example of a written explanation. So part of the rubric is for you to show a, an insightful understanding of the uh, original text by carefully choosing themes, characters, and key moments from the original text. So one thing you have to consider in your written explanation is what are themes, characters, and key moments have you employed from poetry? So the way to think about this is what have you replicated? What have you taken and adapted? What have you reconsidered from a different point of view? Now you may have done more than one of these things. Regardless of that, what you need to do is make sure that you explain how and you explain why and that you provide evidence of how you do that. What techniques of the poetry or the original text have you used? So some things that you could include. Did you choose to write in first person or third person or even second person? And why did you choose to do that? You need to think about what language choices you made. Think about the nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs that you used. Think about figurative language that you used, similes, metaphors, juxtaposition, uh, Oh, juxtaposition isn't really figurative language, but similes, metaphors, personification, right? Other techniques like juxtaposition, okay? Uh, poetic techniques like enjambment even. So we don't want you to just give examples of where you've used those, but also explain to us why you have in particular situations and contexts. You need to also think about structure. Why have you ordered things in a certain way? How have you created a logical flow and why have you done this? If you're writing poetry, if you're writing verse, how have you created rhythm? And why have you created rhythm or flow in this particular manner? What are you trying to get across? Remember that it's not an outline of what you have done. We can see that pretty clearly from reading your work, but we want to uh, understand why you have chosen to employ particular techniques. And it's also helpful for you to reference how you've used them in a similar or adapted way from Harwood or Shinetsky, who are the po poets that we are studying. You need to think about what form you chose. Did you choose a narrative or a personal piece of writing? Right? What kind of genre is your piece? Does your piece belong to? Did you choose to write prose or verse? Or maybe you chose a combination. And why did you do that? You should briefly explain that to give us some clarity as to this particular choice. Importantly, you need to outline what your intention was. And your intention is not simply to complete this sack, nor is it to try and get a really good mark. The way to think about intention is to consider what did you want the reader to feel or experience as they were reading your piece? And what point is your piece making about the stimulus question that you were given? A more simple way perhaps to think about it is by the end of reading your piece, what should the reader feel, think, or believe about whatever you're writing about? Right? What are you trying to explore? What are you trying to examine? What are you trying to get across about a particular theme, about a particular person or character? What are you trying to get across to your audience? What should they come away thinking, feeling, and believing? Of course, that leads really well into who your audience is. And surprise, it's not your English teacher. It's whoever you think 
would connect most to the experiences and themes that you're exploring. That can be people from a particular age range. It can be people from a particular demographic or social group. Whoever it is, you have to make sure you specify your audience. And throughout your piece, you ideally would reference how you were trying to connect to that audience. So there's a summary of the things that you should include in your written explanation. So now let's look at an example. This is an example of a written explanation based on a piece written in response to Gwen Harwood's poetry. Feel free to pause the video at any point in the next section if you prefer to simply read and have a closer look at the text. So, the purpose of my piece is to rewrite Barnell as a narrative, focusing on the character of the father to explore the theme of how parents help their children to mature. The audience is people who are familiar with Gwen Harwood's poetry. The main character I constructed is the father. He is inspired by what I understand about him from Barnell and Nightfall. I chose to write in third person, but not give him a name, in order to generalise this character to all fathers, who I think should be both disciplinarians and carers. I tried to emphasise his qualities as a strict no-sayer in the dream at the start, which is indicated by the indented text. Indentation is used by Harwood to indicate a shift between periods or time, as shown in The Violets. The first fight, and the next, and the next, shows the reader that he is always willing to discipline the child, even if there is conflict. However, I also wanted to emphasise his role as a caring teacher in the child's life, particularly with the tender action of wrapping his hands around hers as he commands her to end what you have begun. This is because I wanted to clarify to the reader that all parental figures play multiple roles in Harwood's poetry, such as in The Violets, where her parents are presented as comforters and sources of wisdom. And now I go into some more specific choices, creative choices. The father's memory of the gun were included... Memories... Oh my goodness, what a typo. Memories of the gun were included to explain why the father, as you can see, I should have edited this, chose a stern but compassionate approach to disciplining the child. The choice to do this reflects his own father's influence on him. The purpose of this is to show the strength of the influence of a parental figure, even through generations, which is explored in Howard's mother who gave me life, and the power of memory to be a positive force in the present, as in The Violets. I chose to start the narrative with a dream which was inspired by the line, Let him dream of a child angel mind. I, used, I chose to expand on this dream by putting in other stages in order to show the progression of the father's relationship with the child up until the start of the narrative and the poem Barnell, which helped to explain how both characters arrived at this situation by giving more context to the child's desire for independence. In Barnell, Howard's opening word, daybreak, symbolizes new beginnings. My use of light in my narrative plays a similar role, but I tried to expand it by making the light a guide for the father. The sliver of early morning sun is supposed to give the father direction and leads him to all the different locations in the story. So in this written explanation, I've explained some things that I've directly replicated, some things I have adapted, uh, and some things that I've approached from a completely different perspective. But I've always tried to explain how I've done that and why I've done that. Right. So when you are writing a written explanation, the two key questions are how have I done this? And why did I do this? And it should link back to your overall intention, which in this case is to explore the theme of how parents help their children to mature.